I think that was Jenny's downfall in terms of seeing her own success. If this movie was made today, she would have had OnlyFans. I mean, yeah, that's what the that's what the Playboy was. If she did have OnlyFans, though, would uh, Forrest have subscribed? The question is, would Forrest know how to subscribe? <laughs> ah! Forrest Gump ain't the greatest movie of all time. It's definitely the most quotable movie of all time. Like I can't think of anything else that's more quotable, especially from beginning to end. This year, you know, 2024 marks the 30th anniversary. It came out July of 1994. And uh, yeah, we're here to talk about it and celebrate it and honor it as one of the greatest, if not the greatest quotable movie of all time, among other things. One of the best assets of doing a retrospective on this film is picking up on the things, especially you know, if you grew up in the 90s like we did, picking up on the things that kind of went over our heads or we didn't notice watching it, like, you know, in our younger years. Yeah, what do you have to I, say? I, I got to interject, bro. I, I, I've been waiting long. I've been waiting too long. I have to interject with, yes, Forrest Gump is probably, I would say maybe top three, if not top five all time. I think if it is number one it, um, in terms of being quotable, it would be because of the length. But I, I do have to throw in Friday and also Coming to America um, as two contenders. Those those two Fair. aren't as long as Forrest Gump, but they are packed with quotable lines. I think especially Coming to America, but I'll have to throw in those two mer- those two movies as contenders to Forrest Gump. I do want to get to like the core of like who the antagonist is in this movie. And I'm pretty sure, you know, watching this, you probably know who I'm directing that towards. But before we go there, before we take that deep dive, how would you like rank the other characters in this film in terms of the performances of the actors or like, you know, how you related to them, sympathize with them or like, you know, your perception of the character, other characters in this movie besides Forrest, like the main characters, you know, I'm talking about Mrs. Gump, Lieutenant Dan, Jenny, Bubba. You know, uh, Bubba. Yeah. Obviously, Lieutenant Dan probably had the most impact on the film in terms of like how how often he's seen in like the different eras of, of Forrest's life that he's in. But my, fa- my personal favorite is Bubba. Okay. I think Bubba probably has the most impact on like the success of Forrest. You know, I was thinking of something when you were mentioning Lieutenant Dan right now, and you might want to like look at this as a knock against the film. If if it is, it is. If it ain't, it ain't. But Lieutenant Dan is the only one in this movie that actually has character development. Well, he's the only person in the story long enough to develop. With Jenny being the love of his life, there's plenty of time for that. Like I can give um, Mrs. Gump a pass, you know, by the way, like, I think Sally Field does an incredible job in this role. Like, um, I feel like when we talk about this movie, we don't really talk about her enough, but she's great. She steals every scene that she's in. Because seeing her role in the film, I understand the lack of character development for her, but in regards to, you know, Forrest and Jenny, even Bub- Bubba, like, well, again, maybe Bubba gets a pass too, but Forrest and Jenny Bubba was not in the <laughs> Bubba was not in the film long enough, bro. So considering, like, you know, the understanding that Forrest Gump doesn't really develop as a character in this film. Is it a testament to how great this film is overall that we don't care what normally we would care if a protagonist doesn't develop throughout the film? Or are we, in a manner of speaking, looking at this film through rose-colored glasses? What What's brilliant about this film is the angle that they took in terms of giving you traditional methods, but in untraditional ways. So it's like he does develop. You see this person going through more things than any than any person in one film. This is technically a fictional documentary. And so yes. this character goes through more lifetimes than anybody else. So to sit there and say that he didn't develop is almost oxymoronic emphasis on moronic because it just sounds stupid for you to say that this man 
who 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 went from needing braces to walk becomes a kazillionaire. He was in wars. He was an Olympian. He did all these different things. To say that this person didn't develop is kind of crazy, but we're looking at it from the traditional sense of what is a character's development. And I think that's the issue. Though I guess what you said was rose-colored glasses. I think that is just looking at it from the standpoint of how a film used to be. But we have to remember that Forrest Gump changed the the way that people created and the way that people looked at film also. So I think yeah. you have to kind of look at it from that standpoint and then you can better understand what Forrest Gump's character development is. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because it definitely, um, this film among like uh, a couple other nineties movies took monumental leaps and the development of what we now know as CGI, like the CGI in this movie is incredible. Like just like looking at, what they did with Lieutenant Dan's legs. <laughs> that is incredible. This, in combination with, um, you know, the T-1000 and Terminator 2 and the dinosaurs and uh, Jurassic Park. But yeah, these movies laid the foundation, also the abyss, um, for what, like, CGI is today. You know, in mm, terms of... Nah, bro. I would disagree there. I feel like the what? CGI and in, in, in these movies that you're talking about, I mean, not so much the Terminator, but those instances of CGI are much better than what we see today. You have to really pay attention to be able to see in certain like historical moments and which is like a linchpin of like what Forrest Gump brought to um, the world of cinema is like those cut scenes or just like those historical moments where he's interacting with like presidents or, or these historical figures. You can't really see where the CGI is. It almost seems like it's real. Like the only one that I kind of looked at and was like, there's something off here, but I can't really tell is the one with John Lennon. Yeah. Um, but other than that, like even the ping pong ball, like I, you could tell that it's that he's not really playing ping pong pong, but you can't, it's not enough to be like, this is fake. You know what I'm saying? Like you have to look, be looking for it. And, I was wondering uh, that too. I was going to ask that. I was going to ask like, did he really play ping pong? Nah, bro. <laughs> now nah, when you're looking at it it's like nah this is too it's too perfect <laughs> if yeah. you notice that that when he's playing by himself he's hitting the square every time the little square that's like on the actual ping pong table he's hitting that square every time that's that's what let me know it was cgi not because of how it looked it was that and then from there you notice oh i'm not even gonna give that away because then it's gonna ruin the magic of it but there's little things that they did to 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 like to combine the practical and the cgi together even like when he does a move where he switches hands, that was dope. <laughs> I just want to like address some things that, especially I did notice, like you know, watching this growing up or whatever, that I've noticed, you know, 30 years later. For one, like I had no idea. I'm sure many of us growing up like didn't really know what was going on with how uh Mrs. Gump got forced to go to a regular school. And now watching it as an adult, seeing the method that she used to get Forrest in a normal school. I was like, oh, that's what she did. How did you not notice that as a kid? I just didn't, because, like, I didn't, I just didn't know. I just wasn't really thinking about it. I was just like, I don't even think I asked my, like, why is this guy moaning? I was just like, oh, like, uh, now watching, I'm just like, was he putting it good on him? Or was he just that eager to get some? Or I don't know, like, something I want to think about, like, when I when it comes to, like, kind of, like, reflecting on this movie, like, watching it 30 years later is, um, again, referencing modern society in terms of, like, how we think of bullying and stuff like that. Again, hot take, I don't really care. Um, this movie low-key proves that bullying works, you know, because when the bullies are like, you know, chasing for us, what happens? He breaks the braces, he starts running, and we see what running gets him throughout the movie. So I'm just like, those bullies actually help them. Bullying works, people. <laughs> Granted, I do want to know, I have this question, um, were, like how homicidal were these bullies? Because I was just really, I was really thinking, like especially when they're older and chasing them in the in the truck, or whatever. I'm just like, were they actually gonna run this motherfucker over? Bro, they busted him upside the head with a rock when he was a kid. Don't, yeah. don't make it seem like it got violent when they got older. I'm just like, it's one thing to throw a rock at somebody, but it's another thing to actually try to at hit his somebody head? in the car. Did Tom Hanks really hop that fence? No, <laughs> I like to believe he did. Um. Uh, the last note I want to make, you know, before we get into like um the deep character dive I want to do, just want to say 
yeah, like, you know, watching this movie now is just funny. I'm just like, yeah, that's definitely not where Elvis got their moves from. And I thought that was definitely not his song. I think that's the whole point of every every historical historical event in this film. A lot of this stuff is BS. A lot of this stuff is, like, made up. And you kind of got to come to your own conclusion. You can't just... You can't just repeat what somebody else told you. And that's why they they were able to rewrite history the way that they wanted to. Because that's what I feel like that's they're saying that that that's what people that's what history is, is somebody just telling the story. It doesn't necessarily have to be true. If enough people say it happened, it happened. Like I really appreciate it that this movie set the time with uh, Forrest's character to see him like give back. Like when it comes to Bubba's family and like, you know, the black church. You know, those scenes where you see him give back, you know, to Bubba's family and to the Black church. Like, I think that was just a nice gesture that they could have easily not done. Well, I understand more so, like, why they did with Bubba's family. But even more so, like, with, like, you know, they definitely didn't necessarily have to do that. Like, with the whole Black church scene, seeing it get rebuilt and upgraded and stuff like that. But I thought that was beautiful. And even though the 90s still might feel recent, but going back then and even further than that you wouldn't expect to see that i'm grateful that like you know um robert zemeckis took the time to actually show that um because because he, he could have easily not done that and nobody would have cared and i wouldn't be did, surprised if if tom hanks had something to do with that also okay that'd be dope if he did yeah I would not like if you know tom hanks if you know what he's done with like documentaries and like docuseries and and you know he, where he grew, what type of people he grew up around. You know the influences. Without Tom Hanks growing up in California, I don't think he could have been as great an actor. He wouldn't have had as many places to pull from as an actor as he had. And I think that kind of has helped him in his career. So shout out to Tom Hanks. And again, I, I, I don't really know. I'll have to do research, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tom Hanks actually advocated for there to be a full circle moment. Um, in this film with Bubba's family. And again, like you said, the black church. But I don't want to take away from, from the writer, director, or anybody who 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 actually did do it. But I I'm, I believe if it wasn't in there originally, Tom Hanks is the type of person to speak up and say it needs to be. What we're really here for is, you know, to really try to find a definitive conclusion on, I feel like, probably at this point, the most hotly debated thing especially if you want to look at memes for this movie now, is Jenny a sympathetic character or is she, or is she just like a piece of shit that we shouldn't give her the benefit of the doubt for? Jenny embodies like these people who, who act out and may irritate you or kind of make you not want to be around them. But mo I feel like most people never consider what made that person that way. And I, mm -hmm. in this film, we see what makes Jenny that way. We know why Jenny is the way that she is and you see it from the very beginning when she wants to, when she wants to be turned into a bird and fly far far away you know and that doesn't change throughout the entire movie she wants to run away at every chance that she can when she's made to feel uncomfortable and you know the the sexual assault from her fa father you know as a kid you know a kid really wouldn't understand it that's why Forrest thought that it was love he literally said that her father loved her so much because he was always hugging and kissing and touching on her and her sister but he didn't know what that was and even probably to the day that she died jenny didn't understand what it was either because when forrest told her and like that, that to a certain extent you would read this scene as jenny's fucked up forrest told her he might not be the smartest but he knows what love is. And he walks outside and Jenny walks hands away. On the hips. I love the hands on the hips. That, that makes me laugh. I, it's just a subtle gesture. Like Tom Hanks is a great actor. It's just like yeah. little things like that. But, um, and she walks away. And the next scene is the sex scene. And most people would say that it was fucked up for her to walk away, but her only knowledge of how to show love it's the same thing as what Forrest said. Her father loved her so much he was always touching and kissing on her. The only way that she knows how to do that is through sex. Mm -hmm. 
that is her only understanding of it. And so when you have this type of person who doesn't really know how to stay somewhere and and kind of deal with things because things were done to you to make you want to run away, then you really don't have any life skills to deal with adversity. And so you have to look at Jenny that way. You can't look at her based on her actions. You have to look at her based on her reaction as a child. So I think that's the frame that we have to put Jenny in. You can look at her however you want to, but I don't think it's a justifiable way to look at her if you're not looking at her through her trauma. If she coped, if she figured out a way to get out of it, that's fine, but she never did. And so you have to look at her as that child. And I'm just curious, like, because I feel like I still kind of miss it with all the things I noticed the, like, this most recent time that I watched it. I was still trying to understand at what point Forrest finally realized what her father did to her because we see, you know, the scene where he had the house uh, both, uh, like bulldozed down or whatever, but it's like, okay, obviously at this point he knows the severity of what her dad did to her, but it's like, not sure exactly what triggered it, where he finally was like, oh, oh shit. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't think he ever did. I so think, why do you think he I, had the house store now? I think, again, it's, it's going back, it always it goes back to his mom, but he always says that his mom explained things in a way that he could understand. And I think his reaction was based on how he understood it. I, I don't think that he knew what her, what, her, what her dad did. I think he understood that she didn't like the house. He saw her throwing rocks oh. at the house. So she hated yeah, the yeah, house. Yeah. Let me get yeah. rid of the house then. Yeah. But I don't think he knows what happened. And I think he can't read situations. And so I don't think yeah. that he was able to tell whether or not her father did anything to her. I think he just saw that, oh, she doesn't like this house. She threw rocks at the house. She doesn't like the house. I'm going to get rid of the house. You know, and knowing just like, you know, the trauma that she has, like in how she was a victim of sexual assault. I'm just wondering, like, how many chances does a person with this type of background deserve? And I feel like that's kind of the real question like we have to ask when it comes to dealing with like loved ones or dealing with people who like, yeah, they have trauma and we know we want to give people the benefit of the doubt. But at what point does giving someone the benefit of the doubt lead to them taking advantage of you? Can we say that Jenny was taking advantage of Forrest? That part, I would say no. I don't think she, because she could have taken advantage of Forrest. Like most people will say she came back when he, when he had all that money, but she didn't stay. That's what I'm you saying. Know, she yeah. didn't really use him for his money like that. She just, she saw him as like home base and like a game of tag. Like whenever, whenever mm -hmm. I need to like recharge, I'll just go hang out with Forrest for a little bit. You know, so to a certain extent, she was like using him, but not like taking advantage of him because she wasn't there long enough to take advantage of him. And if anything, she literally could have like ha had it made and just played for it. She could have stayed with Forrest and, and and made it seem like she loved him and made him believe that she loved him and, and still deal with uh, dealt with other people. But she didn't do that. She 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 went there. She she slept and slept with Forrest and then she left and went back to what she, she what she knows I have to say it was really heartbreaking to see that medal that he gave her on on the was on the what's called the drawer or whatever it was see it sitting there and you just see the look on his face and I feel like that was probably the key moment where I think Forrest finally learned how to read the situation because that's where we see him take off running you know before that we don't really see it seek in when Bubba dies, you know, like obviously he sees it as unfortunate, but he's like, oh, well, he's in heaven now. Same thing with his mom when she dies. Like he doesn't have that emotional breakthrough or breakdown, but like, you know, we see how broken he is when Jenny dies and when he's talking at her grave and stuff. But I think what triggered, ultimately triggered that transition was Jenny leaving him that particular time and him going on that three year run. And I, I think that, it's kind of like a symbol of of how he lets out the tears. Uh, the a film that comes out the same year as Chung King Express, and there's the character in the first love story who talks about instead of crying, he likes to run because the water comes out that way, or the or the tears comes out in the form of sweat. And I think that's mm -hmm. basically what Forrest was doing. He didn't cry over mm -hmm. Jenny, 
Um, he just ran f- for three years, which is comedic in its own right. But people want to take it like Jenny did bro wrong, but it's like she didn't deserve to have his medal. Like she told him she did like she didn't deserve it when she, when he first tried to give it to her. Yeah. And like just she just she just felt guilty about the life that she that she lived and um she just continued try, to try to run and she didn't deserve the medal. So it's like he, she should have left it there. Now should Forrest have also felt sad about it? Yeah, because he loved somebody that he felt like didn't love him back. But at the end of the day, Jenny shouldn't have had the medal in the first place, and that's why she left it there. Not because she didn't love Forrest, not because she hated Forrest, not because she wanted to do bro dirty. It's just like, I don't deserve this. I think that's the ultimate tragedy of her situation, and why I do want to say, like, I sympathize for her is because going through something as traumatic as what she went through during her childhood, and not ever really seeing yourself as the victim, but almost like the oppressor, like, almost like she feels like she never got over the idea that like for some reason she might have deserved what happened to her and so we see that very much in the men she chooses throughout her life like you know when Forrest constantly has to go to bat for her you know due to physically be abuse her like we see them literally put hands on her we see her black eyes you know we just see like you know the men she constantly chooses again you could say like she's fully autonomous in these situations and I'm not trying to say she's not per se but at the same time it's like for her to run away from Forrest constantly to go to those type of men and to get in these type of situations and he's like hang out with this particular like crowd of people that she always seems to get caught up in it's like this idea that you could go through something so traumatic that it screws up your head to the point where you feel like you're not worthy of love you know and that's like kind of the pinnacle and like impetus I guess you could say of depression um, even maybe to a certain extent, anxiety, but just like the sense of just like not deserving of love, not deserving of good things happen to you. To me, that's sad because I feel like people do very much go through that. Like they just like have been through something so terrible that they like they never get past the question, why me? I think that's that's like a, a fallacy too that that we as people who don't live that life think that those people don't believe that they deserve love. I think that they don't look for love that comes in a certain box you know what i'm saying they don't want a person who's super lovey-dovey i don't need a romantic person who's gonna buy me flowers or whatever i don't think that they're looking for a person who necessarily will beat them up but those people who who do beat them up usually treat them or talk to them in a way that they're used to they're not i don't think they're looking for the violence i just don't want somebody who's gonna who's completely different than the way I'm used to somebody treating me. Cause it's like, you can't blame Jenny for, for dating these kind of guys. And then also look at Clementine and, and, and eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and say that she's wrong for always going after the nice guys, knowing that she's just going to kind of take advantage of them. So you can't look at her and, and fault her. And then also fault Jenny. It's like one of them has to be trying to do something that you consider correct. And I think I think Jenny and Clementine are both right because they're both trying to do right by the way that they are. Like they both are these contentious type women, but they're just trying to find love. They're both just trying to find love, and it sucks that it does, that it necessarily doesn't work out. But they're trying, and that's that's all we all are trying to do is we're just trying to find yeah. some, trying to find our version of love. You know, I think you could like you know summarize like. Forrest's character and probably even uh, Jenny's character, probably like everybody in this movie, like with one of the things I said in the very first video that we posted, say once again, like we're all just dogs chasing cars. We want to know what to do if we caught up to it. Forrest is most absolutely the personification of that because, you know, he's always chasing Jenny. There's almost like this anti-magnet thing going on where it's right in front of you, but it's being pushed away. You're not trying to push it away, but it's just like it's going away. And then you have to go and chase it again again and again and again it's like everything else falls into place perfectly for him except the thing he actually wants in a way that's kind of like life like that's like you know you just got to keep pushing with what you have and yeah you might want this one particular thing but at the same time you also have to focus on and take advantage of what you're actually good at yeah so i'll say that like i do like sympathize with jenny just because um she 
just was never able to find direction and she wants what we're all ultimately chasing is a purpose. She kind of just like died really without a purpose. Like even that, like even when she had a son, like, you know, like it's like, it's like she kind of had to do that as a last resort, you know, get pregnant, have a kid in order to like have something to leave behind. We see all these wonderful things that Forrest basically leaves behind the legacy he builds you know, becoming famous and, you know, like, you know, giving money to people like that, he, uh, that he came across and just like, you know, making other people's lives better and like, you know, giving, even, even giving other people a sense of purpose in a sense, like all those people that follow him when he was running, you know, like being this like beacon of hope. Jenny really didn't have that. She's just a very blood transparent depiction of what we're all really searching for. We're just seeing what happens when it just, goes wrong like you know and in a way you could say for looking at forest is what happens when it goes right <laughs> if you want to put it that way but forest is what happens when it goes right jenny is what happens when it goes wrong you die with pretty much nothing i would i would agree and disagree in the same breath i feel like there's only one thing that separates forest and jenny because if we want to say that that forest his biggest accomplishment was his influence his influence on just things that he brought into fruition, whether it be his involvement with Apple, whether it be uh, the shrimp in business, or just the little things that he did while he was running the bumper sticker and the T-shirt. If his biggest thing is his influence, then Jenny's is the same thing. Her, and she only needed to do it with one person to touch everybody. She did that with Forrest. Her biggest impact was what she what she helped Forrest accomplish in his life. She without that, without Jenny, I don't I don't see Forrest having the need to to continue to to run towards anything. You know, he found it by just running, but without Jenny telling him to run, he would have never ran into any of these things. And it starts with him playing football. It started there. And then from there, he always ended up running into something um that that blossom so i think jenny's influence is just as important as forrest but the difference between jenny and forrest is that forrest accepted it what came from it the positive things that came from it and jenny rejected it and i think that's what's different jenny could have had everything that forrest had and he would have been happy to give it to her because he felt like she deserved it she didn't think she deserved it, and that's what separated the two. But I think Jenny is just as influential as Forrest Gump. She just didn't accept it because she had a negative perception of herself. And again, that starts with childhood. She was thought to think that she was a burden and that she needed to get away from the things in her life. And Forrest, because of his mother and and the absence of, of his father, she made him realize no matter what people tell you about you, you're special. Just in general, Jenny ha gets a bad rap. And I think the more that we can sympathize with Jenny, I don't think we could just sit there, simply just blame Jenny and say she's a horrible person. We saw, we saw what happened to Jenny. The last thing I'll say is find your own Jenny to pursue. That way, everything else you want to accomplish is easier. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be a, a woman. You know what I'm saying? Right. It doesn't have to be a man. It doesn't have to be a relationship, I should say. Right. It does not have to be a relationship. It could be, it could just be something that is, and like a lot of people always say that too. Like you have to dream so big that it seems impossible. This has been another episode of Insomnia for Lunch. If you have not commented on anything, is is Jenny a sympathetic character or is Jenny trailer trash and a piece of shit? Um, I think we both agree that she, that she's a very sympathetic character who in a roundabout way showed her showed her worth and her ability. And and also I, I will add that Jenny Jenny could have been successful, but unlike Forrest, she didn't she didn't stay anywhere long enough to 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 see her success but yeah that, this has been another episode of insomnia for lunch i am space god 
This genius over here is Anubis, and we'll be right back after these messages. Thank you.